My name is Jeff Herrick, soil scientist with the USDA Agricultural Research Service at the Hornada here in Las Cruces, New Mexico. This set of training videos provides training on using the NRCS Cropland Infield Soil Health Assessment Guide and the protocols included in it. As the guide states, in general, it will not be necessary to evaluate all 11 indicators, but only those that are needed to adequately assess a field soil health status at the time. Some indicators will be more interpretable and representative of soil health than others, depending on site conditions, soil type, landscape position, climate, time of year, and production system. I will demonstrate these protocols using the Land PKS or Land Potential Knowledge System app, but the data can also be recorded using any other system, including paper data forms. The Land PKS app allows you to do three things in addition to making a soil health assessment. The first is that it provides multiple categories for each indicator so that you are not limited to a yes-no response as you are on the standard data form. Multiple categories allow you to interpret your data for your own soil. The multiple categories also allow you to use the app to monitor changes in your soil over time. The second is that in many cases, such as soil surface crusting and penetration resistance, the app breaks out the indicator into key components so you are sure to collect all the information you need. Third, and most importantly, the app allows you to determine what type of soil you have. Different soils in different climates have different potentials. For example, sandy soils and soils in dry climates have lower potential to accumulate soil organic matter and to form soil aggregates. So, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is to figure out what type of soil we have. In addition to helping interpret our data, we need to determine soil type if we want to compare two treatments. For example, I'd like to know if soil health is different in an abandoned garden. You see here, this one hasn't been planted or irrigated for seven years, versus this actively producing pecan orchard, which is irrigated many times every year. I'll start by creating a land PKS site in the garden and in the orchard. Both locations show the same list of possible soils, which means we're basically predicting based on the soil map that it's the same soil in both locations. But the listed soils are very different. The three most likely soils have loam, clay loam, and loamy sand topsoils. So the sites could easily be on different soils. And it's possible one or both were manipulated by adding sand or clay or inverting the soil to bring in a deeper layer. It turns out that the topsoil in the orchard is a sandy clay loam and the topsoil in the garden is a sandy loam. So to compare the health of these soils, I have to take into account that I'm comparing two different soils. In this case, the difference isn't large, like comparing a pine tree to a pecan tree, but more like comparing an apple tree to a peach tree. A sandy loam and a sandy clay loam both have high potential for most soil health indicators, but the relative potential for each is greater for some indicators than for others. Finally, before beginning to record observations, we suggest you review the following settings on the Land PKS app. You can select metric or English units. Under soil color settings, select the color reference you plan to use. I'm changing it to a 3M Canary yellow post-it note. You can also change the language if you'd like, to Spanish for example. To start recording soil health observations and measurements on Land PKS, tap on the Data Input tab, scroll down to Soil Health, and select the date. Go to Soil Depths and select the depths you plan to use. The default is for common depths typically used by NRCS for soil health indicators, but you can change them to anything you'd like and add or delete. Then select Field Observations. The list you see is the same list as appears on the NRCS Cropland Infield Soil Health Assessment Worksheet, though some of the names are slightly different. We have also included additional soil health indicators for runoff and erosion and soil smell and fields to record soil test results. This set of training videos provides a very brief introduction to each indicator. There is more information available in the question mark text in the app for each indicator. There is also more information, of course, available in the guide that's produced by NRCS. Finally, you can find more information on our website, landpotential.org. On the website, you'll find more training videos and other training materials, 
and you can sign up for email updates to get the latest information about the LAN PKS app as soon as it comes out.